Hey everybody, nice to see you again. Welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a bit of a haul from the SFAST, Sheaf Valley Aquarist Society. They had their show and auction today. Once again, I couldn't stay for the whole thing, but I did manage to get most of the way through the auction and I got quite the haul, so we'll take you through that. It was a bit different than the last auction that I went to with this club that was held in the pub. This one was held in, uh, I think it's like a cricket sports centre type thing. Uh, so it was a lot busier this time. And so the lots were a lot more diverse, shall we say. There were some good deals, some not so good deals, and some didn't understand deals. Um, but there was a few different societies and clubs that were there. Um, I was talking to a few people who recognised me from the channel, so hello if you were one of them. And I was talking to some of the one of the guys from the Central Aquarist Society down from Glasgow. So there was quite the range of people coming from all over Britain. Um, so hopefully everyone that was there got something that they wanted. I got a few things that I wanted and a few things that I wasn't really intending to buy. But let's take you through it. Anyway, first things first, we'll go with the dry stuff. I managed to get a copy of this book. Um, Handbook of Tropical Aquarium Fishes. Now that might not mean anything to you. But it's a book that I have seen before and I've often seen quoted when you talk to people who are pretty knowledgeable. They say, ah oh, well if you've been in the Axelrod book, um, which this is by Dr. Herbert R. Axelrod and Dr. Leonard P. Schultz. Um, it's quite the handbook, so there's lots of stuff in here, lots of information about not just fish, there's plants as well in here as well. So there's, it's going to be a good resource, I think. I think I paid £4 for that, so that was quite a deal I thought. So I've got the book, I've got a bunch of fish bags, some really uninteresting stuff. Um, I always like to buy, they always sell these little sample sized bags of um, flake food, so these are tropical flakes, I've got some brine shrimp flakes, and a couple of bags of catfish pellets, or sinking pellets, um, algae wafers I think rather than pellets and um, so they should be pretty good for me and then we've got the kind of livestock side of things so first off um, I've got a couple of bags of these plants which is dwarf sag I think uh, that's correct so a couple of good sized bags of that which will maybe let me do a good little carpet in one of the tanks I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with it yet um, Oh yeah, this isn't livestock. I um, don't know why I bought this. I think I've got a bit of an obsession for CO2 stuff at the moment. This was sold as a CO2 system reserved three pounds. So what it is, so I'm assuming this, I don't know anything about this basically, but this will be the bit that goes in the tank. Uh, and there's an airline section here which hooks up, I imagine, down here somewhere. I've seen something similar before, so basically that goes against the side of the tank and then you release air into them and the air bubbles travel up there and they spend a lot of time in contact with the water. So we'll see how that gets on, whether we can use that. So that's the bit that goes in the tank. On the other end of that is this unit. Which I don't, I've not seen this before, I don't know whether it is an actual... Ah, so that's just an empty vessel. So I'm assuming this is for like kind of DIY version where you can drop in some yeast or whatever you want to do. So expect a video on that in the future. We'll try and put this to use somewhere. I have been trying lots of different types of CO2 systems. I've only shown you the ones which I think work so far, so I might do one video on all the ones that failed. Um, what else have we got? Oh, I've got a bunch of snails, so these are more ram's horn snails. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five lots of them. Just to kind of diversify the genetics of the snails that I've already got and feed some more puffers. So I've got five of them. I've got some <laughs> high grade cherry shrimp. Um, um, I'm less than convinced on the the high grade element of that, but I always like to buy shrimp whenever I get the chance to diversify the genetics on the shrimp that I keep, so it is what it is. Mine aren't extremely high grade anyway, so it's no big deal. 
Then we've got, this was one of the ones I wasn't necessarily intending to buy, so a couple of Cooley loaches. Um, they were kind of impulse buy at the end of the auction, why won't you focus? Focus. They were kind of impulse buy on the, the end of the, the auction. Uh, there's one red one and one regular brownie one. And the reason, they weren't totally an impulse buy, but a couple of people have commented on videos before saying with the pea puffers or try them with coolie loaches, they work quite well. Don't know, I'll give it a bash. Um, all these fish will be getting quarantined first, so if you think any of the ideas I come up with now are stupid or dangerous, by all means let me know in the comments, I will take them into consideration. These, um, this was, I didn't know they were there, but I thought I'd get them anyway. Dwarf Neon Rainbows. There's a, a female and two males, or a male and two females. I think the females are the ones with the yellow top, if I remember correctly. But there's certainly a breeding group because there's also, there's eggs in the bottom of the bag. So that sounds good. Uh, I've got a couple of these already, so that will bolster the numbers that I've got for there. That was one of the central aquarist guys that pointed out the eggs. I've never seen that before in a bag. I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Then, got three of these super red bristle noses. Um, you're not going to be able to see much in the way of the bags here. So, they're all a decent size. I'll get some shots of these once I get them into tanks as well. And then last but not least, something I've been trying to get for a long time, and I probably paid more than I needed to. Killifish. So this is a pair of whatever that says. <laughs> um, I get into a bit of a bidding war with these ones and paid a bit more than I thought I should or wanted to. But even in the bag, look at the colours on this guy. So, I shall go and get these acclim acclimatated, acclimatated, acclimatised, a word, I mean something like that. I'm going to float the bags, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not doing anything special with any of these, they're all going to go into quarantine tanks first and foremost. But I'll float the bags, get them up to temperature and then do my blop and, blop and drop. No, I'll do my drop and plop method, which is... Snip the bag, pour the water through a net into a bucket, net the fish into the tank they're going into. I've, I've not drip acclimated anything for a long time and I've not lost any fish by doing it this way. So I'm going to continue to do it that way. Something a bit funky going on with this one's gill. I don't know if you can see that. This looks quite red. I can't tell if it's just the way the bag's going. So we'll have a look at that in a bit as well. Yeah, so drop and plop, get them in, and we'll have a look at them with them in tanks.
Right, so all the fish and plants are in. Um, moved things around probably since the last time you've seen this room. So I'll give you a bit of a tour of the mini fish room and we'll start with this tank. Because I've just spied some eggs. And if I don't show you now, the biter will probably eat them. So, right here is some bristlenose eggs. I don't know which pair they've come from or whose they are but I'm sure they'll be gobbled up soon. The fact that there's one in there makes me think that that's sitting on eggs, but who knows, who knows. Um, yeah, so this tank has basically been the kind of misfit tank of fish that I don't know what else to do with them, but at the moment it's the pleco tank. So all that's in here is all the bristlenose plecos. We've got various types. You can see there's a lemon over there. There's a normal brown, and that's not a pleco. That's the bicher. Um, I am going to move him up into the puffer tank so he's putting on size reasonably rapidly and I think the puffer will leave him alone it certainly he leaves alone the um, black ghost knife fish that's in there so we'll see yeah but he's pretty cool um, really friendly really interactive he's out all the time and um, you'll notice there's a single remaining crib just about there and I think that's it for this tank. The rest of them are all bristlenose plecos that are dotted around the place. Um, I need to do something with this. I'm just not quite sure what yet. Um, and we swing over to this tank. Nothing new in here. This is the salt water tank with the mega algae on the back and the sides. I just want rid of this. So if you happen to live in Sheffield or thereabouts, and you're interested in some live rocks, some clowns, damsels, snails, hermits, Come and make me an offer, we'll see what we can do. Uh, down here we've got nothing new, that's just some guppies. Again, want to do something with this. I'm kind of getting fed up with guppies, they're taking over everything. Um, so, might get rid of them all as well. Here is the cherry shrimp tank. Um, doing really well. Some of the, that might be one of the new ones there. It's very red. Yeah, the, the new shrimp that I bought, they were sold as high grade or top grade shrimp, but we'll see. Uh, I can't really see that many of them, they're all kind of hiding now, but there's a few in there. Uh, all I like to do with my shrimp is, every now and again, just get a new batch from somebody else, just so as it's not the same shrimp breeding and interbreeding in with themselves constantly. Um, but there's probably about 60 or 70 in there, you just can't see very many of them. And it's a bit of a pain in the bum to try and catch them. In this tank we've got the new Dwarf Neon Rainbows. Um, they're all just hiding back there behind the Java Moss. They were the ones that had spawned in the bag. Uh, there's still a couple of eggs floating around in, in there. I don't think they're going to be viable or anything, but... It's good start to have them breeding so easily and then over here we have the killifish let's look at the colours on that guy so it's a male and a female the male obviously is the coloured up ones um, rather than trying to bash the pronunciation I'll just I'll put it up on screen somewhere what they're actually called um, 
the idea is I want to get these in one of the tanks in my office but I'll leave them to do their quarantine in here for a minute. What I've done is I've just got I've used a tank that's reasonably low water level and put on a tight lid. Um, I need to cover this bit up because apparently they're very prone to jumping killifish. But the fact that they've only been in there about 10 minutes and look how look how bright they are. So that looks good. Um, up here is the loaches. The coolie loach. And there's two of them in there. I don't know if you can see them. I think they're just underneath that filter. Hiding out. Here another guppy tank that just needs something doing with it. And here we've got the three super red bristlenose. Well this is going to be their tank. Um, they're a bit young at the moment to be able to tell whether they're males or females or what but we can but hope. See how we got on with these guys. And then underneath them we've got the snail farm. Snail farm with a red cap Miranda in there trying to do a job on some of the duckweed. He is starting to do it. Um, just very slowly. He's managed to do this tank so we've got one tank that's duckweed free. He's making a start on this tank but I keep getting people leaving me comments saying, oh yeah, I give it to my goldies. I just put in a big handful of duckweed and within two minutes it's all gone. Well, this is about two months work for this guy. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, this is just snails. In fact, that's some of the new snails that I bought. And then in here we've got the plants and disaster number one. I was messing about with this light the other day and it knocked it off or knocked it out of its hold and fell in the tank so only one half works and then the blues work on that half so we have a blue half of the tank and a white half of the tank so I have some new lights to replace these lights and these are two T5 or is it T8? two T5 bulbs I'm going to put them on the planted tanks and then I'm going to put spots down here as well that's it, I'm just showing off my new fish today really, that's about it um, like I said earlier, the auction was good. A uh, real mix of stuff going on there. Um, I had to leave early, it went on forever. Um, Sotherbees, it ain't, but eh, still fun. Um, I think I got a couple of bargains. I probably paid a little bit too much for some things, but these things happen. It's all, all in a good cause, or all in good fun. Um, if you happen to be the guy that I gave my lottery or uh, raffle tickets to, let me know if you won, if you see this video. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to claim the prize back or anything. Just be interested to know. Um, and yeah, if you keep any of these new guys that I've picked up, let me know any tips, tricks, all that kind of stuff in the comments. And as ever, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.